So how lovely to be here in your city, and I bring greetings to you from Pakistan. The title is No to Handouts, Yes to Self-Reliance, Empower Communities for Post-Disaster Development with Women in the Lead. So thank you, my friend Jeff Rich, and his amazing team for organizing this global event. And thank you, my, my, all of you, for providing me the opportunity to seek a greater understanding about the disastrous impact of climate change as my country, Pakistan, undergoes the worst calamity ever. So you can see the Pakistan map. Yes. And uh, uh, during August this year, a rare occurrence of record monsoon rains combined with melting glaciers in our northern mountains have caused a deluge, resulting in the displacement of 33 million people, rendering five million families bereft of homes and belongings that has also wiped out thousands of acres of standing crops. The flooding has submerged one third of the country, the size of United Kingdom. Can you imagine? We, knew, we know that this major calamity is the result of global warming, aggravated by the global north's unregulated consumption, as well as unfettered greenhouse gas emissions by countries around the world. Somehow there's not enough consciousness about this. And to consider that Pakistan is not even among the significant contributors to the emissions, and still it is our people who have suffered unprecedented misery due to various global polluters. So here I am, seeking help from the world, at the same time asking you to disregard the international Western colonial model of charity that believes in handouts. We don't want any handouts. Instead, to help replace it with a humanistic culture of giving, one that would foster connectivity with each other, foster empathy and compassion, rather than pity for those that are displaced today. I would like a paradigm shift from charity to empowerment, from dependence to self-reliance, and from women being suppressed to placing women in the lead. So living in the seventh most vulnerable country, and I think we've gone one notch up, I'm sure, with the floods that we've had, in the last 17 years, I've experienced some of the worst flood and earthquake disasters in my country. It was Pakistan Great Earthquake 2005 that provided me the opportunity to begin working in earth buildings. Using lime instead of cement and designing new homes using recycled materials such as stone and wooden logs retrieved from the debris that most of my peers considered non-architecture. The general imp impression among the elitist world was that in my old age, I'd become a little dotty and was no longer able to see the dazzling potential of the 21st century architecture. So, uh, and they were right too, you know. I had once been one of them, as you can see, as, as the first female architect having been trained at Oxford Brooks, I had begun my career in a conservative male-dominated Muslim country. And in the 1980s, as a star architect, I had the opportunity to design some of the largest iconic structures in my country. I had myself indulged in an extravagant egotistic journey, focusing on serving the elite of my country, using some of the most expensive materials that carried the most carbon footprint. And now I had done renegade, devoting my life to working for the poor, it was sitting at the threshold of the poor and seeking inspiration from their age-old wisdoms, cultural heritage, and vernacular traditions that helped me to work out low-cost, sustainable methodologies that resonated with the aspirations of marginalized communities in my country. Through this process, I have I've sort of understood that design cannot be a standalone activity. It must be underpinned by an understanding of social impact and ecological sustainability. While working in the humanitarian field, I witnessed how destructive to the moral fiber of my people was when international and national organizations treated them as victims, making them accustomed, accustomed to receiving handouts. It was particularly disturbing when high carbon alien urbanized forms were promoted as the panacea for our disaster-stricken communities, costing three to four times 
than the zero carbon sustainable climate resilient structures built with local lime, stabilized earth, and bamboo that could be self-built by the people themselves. Because of widespread deficits and deprivation, particularly among women in my country, for the pursuit for justice has been paramount for me. So, and the reason for designing Barefoot Social Architecture or BASA for the disadvantage, I felt empathy with those who walked barefoot and had become my fellow travelers. So through the zero carbon sustainable processes and application of BASA principles, we were able to help 840,000 people over seven years. And then there is Champa, uh, a non-literate female barefoot entrepreneur becoming a millionaire. By guiding 40,000 rural housewives at a charge of only 80 pence per unit to self-build their Pakistan Chula earthen stove, which won the World Habitat Award, she earned 32,000 pounds over five years, earning 30 times her original income of 16 pounds per month. This climatic upheaval has provided Pakistan to take the lead, I believe, in the use of sustainable, locally sourced materials and low impact and low tech procedures that echo and respond to the unmet needs of the disadvantaged, leading to both social and ecological justice and dignity for women. So by treating communities as partners and application of Baza principles, my organization has adopted a, a cluster of 13 villages and we are adop adopting many more, where the central one is a training village, each practicing a specialized barefoot enterprise for fulfilling the needs of the displaced who are all around them. At least seven villages are expected to become self-sufficient within eight weeks, which is by the end of this month, hopefully. So this is a decorated shared water pump on the raised earthen platform, so that it doesn't get washed away when the flood strikes, which each village will have along with solar panels and eco toilets. And also, if you see this little house at the shelter, it's called the log, the Lari Octagreen, uh, which is prefab bamboo emergency shelter. And uh, it becomes really quite permanent if you were to take it on, a, on foundations. And so um, through this pilot, for 1,000 families, we are able to demonstrate that our communities might be displaced, but they are not disabled. And with a little bit of hand-holding, they are able to fend for themselves. There are so many of these enterprises that have started already. So today, I seek mercy of another kind for my country to pursue an ethical, humanistic humanitarianism, the Baza culture of giving, through Adopt a Village program, establishing a barefoot knowledge network, and provision of climate change trainings. Knowing that 40% of all emissions are due to the way we build, I appeal to architects, I believe there are quite a few here, at least students are here, I'm told, uh, engineers and planners, to lower the carbon footprint in all that we design. I need renowned philanthropists, international aid agencies, and lending institutions to invest into direct engagement with communities, rather than throwing their own or taxpayers' money into an anonymous bottomless pit. I seek assistance from the intellectually and scientifically endowed Global North to share their research and knowledge for, seeing, for focusing on innovative ways of climate resi resilient farming, protection of water resources, and growing of food. And to utilize technical expertise for fashioning not a capitalist Amazon, but a humanistic interchange for directly connecting with those in need through our people, through the Google map of zero carbon villages that you can actually locate. Whether direct support to barefoot enterprises by using village pan accounts or a host of items in kind, cell phones to women's committees, solar panels for village energy needs, monitors and computers for remote learning for school children and telemedicine. The catastrophic flood, Pakistan floods, have demonstrated the reality of climate change. When tomorrow any country in the global north or south might be the victim. Should we all not work together towards a carbon neutral future through a humanistic 
was a cultural given. I thank you.